Adidas, Nike, Puma. When talking about sports marketing, these are the brands that come to mind. But there is another footwear brand that built its success largely on its association with sport, and one sport in particular. Welcome you now to skateboard first. Vans is the number one skateboarding shoe company in the world, having become the uniform of choice for skaters, bikers, surfers and snowboarders alike. Their brand took on even greater significance after the company became sponsor of the now legendary Warp Tour, the longest running music festival in North America. But how did a small, family-owned business achieve such success when facing competition from rivals like Converse, newcomers like Under Armour and sneaker giants like Nike? The answer lies in how Vans shifted their focus from being a manufacturing company to a marketing company and from a mere skate shoe to a lifestyle brand. This is the story of their transition. In 1964, California-based Paul Van Doren was an employee of the Randolph Rubber Company. Despite being the third largest shoe manufacturer in the US, Randolph's profit margins were terrible, with only a few pennies made for every shoe sold. Van Doren knew that the real profits lay in retail, not manufacturing, so he came up with a business plan to sell shoes directly to the consumer. But when his idea was turned down by his boss, Paul would quit his job at Randolph to form the Van Doren Rubber Company with his brother and two other business partners. In 1966, the house of Van Store was established in Anaheim, California, and three months later, they sold their first shoes. During its first decade, Van struggled to turn a profit, but once the skaters from Santa Monica and Manhattan Beach showed up, sales took off. Although their shoes weren't originally designed with skateboarding in mind, the key to Vans' early success lay in supporting the rising skate culture of the 70s and 80s. The company hardly spent money on advertising at first, but it wasn't long before Stacy Peralta became the first sponsored skateboarder. For $300 a week, he'd wear Vans gear at all his competitions, and it wouldn't take long before all of Vans' stores were paying seven skaters each to wear their shoes. The first shoe model was the Authentic. It had a rubber sole that was twice as thick as that of other brands. Due to the waffle-shaped profile, the grip on the board was also better. As a result, the Authentic became intimately tied to the legendary Zephyr skateboarding team, aka the Z-Boys. Hailing from Dogtown in the mid-70s, they helped pioneer what would become modern-day skateboarding and wore blue Authentics as part of their uniform at the Del Mar Nationals in 1975. We had these shirts and we had dark blue vans, and that was our uniform. A year later, Z-Boys members Stacy Peralta and Tony Alva would help develop the company's first skate shoe, known initially as Off the Wall, and later renamed The Era. It became the shoe of choice for a whole generation and would set up vans to become the de facto skate shoe brand for decades to come. By successfully appealing to the youth culture of its time, Vans was able to gain what every shoe brand now desperately wants. Frequent endorsements by high-profile celebrities, first in sports and later in Hollywood. A famous example is when Universal Studios called to say that 21-year-old Sean Penn wanted a pair of their checkerboard slip-ons to wear in his upcoming movie, Fast Times at Richmond High. That was my skull! The free screen time given to their shoes would propel Vans to nationwide popularity in 1982. By 1987, the company was selling over 2 million shoes a year, earning them over 50 million dollars, and their first signature skate shoe would soon debut as a collaboration with legendary vert skater Steve Caballero. But the fast times would soon come to a halt. After a few years of great business in the 80s, Vans would start producing shoes for seemingly everything. Basketball, running, breakdancing and even skydiving. But the production costs were too high and sales were disappointing, forcing the company to file for bankruptcy in 1984 with over 12 million dollars in debt. Luckily, founder Paul Van Doren was able to negotiate well and save the company. Three years after the impending bankruptcy, he resurrected the brand, now free of debt. A year later, Paul would sell his company for 75 million to a banking firm. But the regime change ushered in new problems. By the 90s, Vans was facing competition from younger shoe brands like DC and Osiris. The owners wanted to prevail with a new strategy against the competition. Production was moved to China and the designs were changed. The customer base responded moderately and after five years of sustained growth from 88 to 93, Vans profits would begin to fall. 
Ten years later, sales had stagnated and Vance was losing $30 million a year. The one saving grace that kept the brand relevant throughout the 90s was that Vance no longer only made and sold shoes, but transitioned into a marketing company. Vance wanted to organize a huge skating event and linked up with the organizer of a punk rock tour. In 1995, they started the skateboard contest Warp Tour for the first time, a music and sports event that runs through the countries for several weeks. The Warp Tour was so big and successful that it also took place outside the USA. It was a resounding success for the next 25 years and offered international exposure to some of the biggest acts of the 90s and 2000s. Not long thereafter, Vance set out to sponsor sports events like the Triple Crown for skateboarding. The first edition debuted in 95 at the Hard Rock Cafe in Newport Beach, with 11,000 people in attendance and Tony Hawk taking home first place. In 96 they added surfing to the contest, followed by snowboarding in 97 and wakeboarding, motocross and BMX in later years. The events received global television coverage and prompted Vance to add a pro surf team to their operations in the late 90s. Years later they'd be sponsoring the US Open of surfing. Vance also came up with the first ever Park Terrain World Championship, which was chosen to serve as the blueprint for the upcoming skate competitions in the 2021 Olympic Games in Tokyo. Vance continued their strategy and hosted an array of events. It was this wave of event sponsorship and lifestyle branding that helped maintain the cool factor around an otherwise financially stagnant company and as a result, Vance was acquired in 2004 for 400 million dollars by the VF Corporation. With a number of other brands in its portfolio like Wrangler, Timberland and the North Face, VF was well positioned to oversee Vance's comeback and their clever business strategy resulted in just that. Alongside other skate brands like Thrasher and Palace, Vance has expanded its appeal beyond extreme sports into fashion at large. The turning point came in 2004 with the launch of Customs program, which allowed fashion designers to create their own slip-on designs. The following year, Vance teamed up with Marc Jacobs and Karl Lagerfeld for high-end collections that secured their place in the fashion industry. They've also created shoes with everyone from Supreme to brands like Star Wars, Disney, Metallica and The Beatles, all of which has helped grow their fanbase. Skate shoes were then one of the few fast-growing categories in the otherwise stagnant US sneaker market. Rather than spending money on new shoe designs, VF refocused on retail by raising its store count to 200 by 2009. They also re-established the classic models like the Authentic and the Era as centerpieces of Vans product line. VF would also leverage their distribution channels to push Vans into the apparel market. Thanks to the sale of t-shirts, sweatshirts, backpacks, jeans and more, Vans Apparel became a $400 million cash cow by the mid-2010s. As a result of this expansion, most people who now buy Vans are regular consumers and have no interest in extreme sports. With the rise of the streetwear and at leisure wear market, people have opted for sportswear as a part of their daily wardrobe, providing companies like Vans with a new, sizable market to profit from. Nowadays, there is a whole subculture that uses Vans as their canvas and customize them. Vans is now the second favorite footwear brand among teens, behind Nike, and has eclipsed the North Face as VF's top selling brand. Where other companies would have met their downfall, Vans has found ways to prosper through successful brand extension. They now boast over 700 stores worldwide, with total revenues rising from $2 billion in 2015 to $3 billion in 2018. By the estimation of their CEO, if Vans had the same global penetration that they currently have in Southern California, they'd be an $8 billion company. So for all its success, the company still has a lot of room to grow. With a fan base ranging from pop culture to skate legends like Tony Hawk to socialites like the Kardashians, Vans products are now omnipresent. Having grown from a single shoe store to a multinational giant that grosses 80% of its revenue from shoe sales alone, it's a true case of from rags to riches. Vans didn't just build its footwear empire on the unlikely strength of a waffle-shaped sole. The authenticity that made the brand so successful was rooted in the brilliant decision to associate with skateboarding and street culture and become an icon in the skating and extreme sports world. Tell us about your shoe. What do you associate with Vans? Let us know in the comments. Finally, you can now become an Athletic Interest Patreon. To see our new Patreon page, check out the link below.
And as always, please consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video and if you want to watch more videos about the sports industry.